Hey guys, I'm Jacob Wheeler. In this video, I'm gonna explain the philosophy of what I do day in, day out in bass fishing. I don't even know where to start, to be honest with you, in this in this video, because it's, it's really a lot, a lot. I couldn't sit here and tell you guys so much. First is passion. Okay, let's step back into the passion aspect of this, because I love bass fishing. Like what they do day in, day out, a bass, does everything for a reason. And so it can be as simple as like, I go out there and I catch one on a, on a plastic worm, like when I started fishing, like the first fish I hook and jumps, I remember the bite, the first bite that I had, the tick, tick, and I missed it. I didn't catch the fish. I remember the first bite I ever had. I remember what it felt like. So the passion that I have for bass fishing, just throw tournament bass fishing out of the equation, just fishing in general, like, I love it. Like, I, I can't explain to you guys how, people ask me this, this all the time, they say, do you, do you still enjoy it? And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, you know, traveling all over the country, competing, fishing, you know, and I'm like, look, tournament fishing can be, you know, can be a lot of times, it's a lot of time away from home. But I'm like, you know what I do on my time off? I go fishing because I love it. Like it's so much fun and enjoyment and there's getting a bite and getting, you know, having a fish by the top water and all these things. Now the thing is, with all, it's all being said, there's a reason behind everything, for the most part, that a bass does. And, and, and it's always a challenge, like when you go to a body of water, especially like traveling and seeing new bodies of water and trying to break them down, understand, because bass, like they're, some days they they can sit there and you could think about, you're like, man, this is easy. Like I caught a hundred bass today and you have a great day. And then the next day you go out there and you get a, not a single bite. And you're like, what the heck happened? Like those are the things that, like keep me going back for more. The days that I catch them, I'm like, oh, I got them figured out. But the days that I don't, I'm like, no, no, we we gotta figure this, we gotta figure this out. So so jumping into the beginning of it all, a bass overall is a pretty, pretty like, I would say simple creature you would think, okay? He swims around, he thinks of a couple different things. He's either thinking about spawning or eating. All right, let's just sort of like think about this. So, but there's so many variables in, in the grand scheme. It's like, there's large mouth, there's small mouth, there's spotted bass, you know, they all have their own like, it's almost like turkey hunting, like Merriam's and Easterns and like they all have their own personalities, you know? So like once you learn what like a large mouth does, but like then there's large mouth that are like, Florida strain and his personality versus like a Northern strain. So anyway, I'm getting diving into this. So what I try to do is this. I try to put a rhyme to a reason with my bass fishing. There has to be something that makes sense. Even to the point of like, I, I remember a, a very, you, know, you hear patterns all the time, a pattern. Like, what is that? Like, how do you sort of use <clears throat> information that like you gain and a pattern to me is like, okay, like for instance, I've had patterns that are as crazy of like the first dock in a cove that has a black float on it. There'll be a big giant female up underneath there when they're getting ready to spawn. Like where I go and throw a swim bait by the side of it and you catch big ones. It just, that's the, but there's a reason behind this. Okay. You think like, oh, okay, well there's, that's just, why are they doing that? Well, the bass swims in there and he sits up underneath that float and that sun's, you know, they're females because it's warming the eggs. They're sitting there and they get up underneath that flow because it's warm, it's hot. It's, and it's the first thing they come to when they come out of the deep water. It makes sense when you think about it, but you're like, what the, huh? The first, but it has to have a black float. If it's a pole dock, they aren't, they aren't getting the warmth out of it. So I think back, like, why do I make some of the decisions that I make throughout, you know, when I'm out there on the water, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out what a bass is doing and, and one of the coolest thing is, is when, you, when you have a tough day on the water and you do finally figure out, there's a puzzle. I always look at every day like a puzzle, okay? And you get all these pieces, a hundred piece puzzle. And some days you get 50 of the pieces together and you have a decent day. And some days everything goes together and in the time period and you put all hundred pieces of that puzzle together in a short amount of time and you're able to have an amazing day. 
And so, but there's always a puzzle to solve. And, and that's what I love about bass fishing is the fact that it's always changing. There's always variables. You have weather, you have you have their mood of the fish, you have cold fronts, you have things that change their mentality of and the species. There's so much that revolves around what this is. And so it never is just turnkey. Oh, they're gonna be right here. Sometimes it can be that fun, but most of the time it's not. And, and so when I go out there on the water, I wanna be as prepared as I possibly can because I'm trying to figure out that puzzle faster than anybody else on that given day. You know, a very good example of this is, you know, I pull up to a dock and it's pre-spawn and these fish are coming out of deeper water. They've been living in their deeper haunts. And, you know, for me, like, you know, a swim bait's a great bait to throw, like a little small, like a four inch Largo shad. Um, they're pulling up out of those places. They're starting to transition to move into these pockets to spawn. The thing about, like when I'm out there on the water is I always have a mindset of they're always biting somewhere. I'm not a guy that's gonna sit there and drag a point for four hours and, 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 and make one bite. I'm just, that's not me. There's, we're fortunate, especially, you know, <laughs> we're fortunate in a lot of these places in the country, there's a lot of fish and, and they're gonna be in a good mood somewhere on this body of water. I just have to figure out where. That's why when I go and, and I put 10 rods in the front deck, you know, and I have different baits and different dive depths, it's, it's to target, depending on their, you know, or a, a jerk bait, different colors or different worm colors and different fall rates. All of this is to try to sort of like target a fish and if he's in a different mood. You know, like they might want a different profile. Today, today they might be biting a jerk bait really good, and the next day they want a, they want a wacky worm. You know, so you you have to constantly adapt. And it, and so, like I look at scenarios of of fishing in in like tournaments that I've fished, like you know where you you always got to be thinking of like where they're going to. Like you you hear like the the the, the saying of like you always want to fish for the fish that are coming to you scenario for tournaments. So winning winning tournaments that there's are doing well and putting this piece of the puzzles together it, it comes down to getting a clue okay getting a clue throughout the day that's a huge part of it like you're basically you start your day with all these tools okay on the front deck of your boat and that's how i like i like to fish there's always a place where or there's their bass are always biting somewhere so put that in your mind because they are like whether you're not you just haven't figured the puzzle out yet Okay. And so as I have, you know, I make a cast with a spinner, but I make a cast with a vibrating jig. I make a cast with a DT6. I make a cast with, you know, I'm making some casts here. I'm doing this. I'm fishing some rock. I'm fishing some wood. I'm fishing. I'm trying to figure out. And I get that first bite. Oh, that fish was on, on a point, secondary point with a little bit of rock on it. Okay. Click. Okay. They might be moving in. Okay. That's good to know. Go run to the next place. Oh, I just got another bite. And that puzzle starts filling in, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, okay, DT6, rock. And your process of, you go from 10 rods for me on the deck. Now all of a sudden I go to two rods that I'm really focusing on. And then all of a sudden, hey, the crankbait is it. My puzzle's together. Now I'm running down the lake and it's like, that's it right there. Roll in there, whoosh, crank over that, that, that rock point and it locks up. That in bass fishing, like that is to me, like that puzzle's, taken care of for that day. You figured out a pattern. You figured out what the fish were doing. So there's nothing more satisfying than going on a body of water and figuring them out for the day. You figured the code. You put the puzzle together. And, and so, but that always is changing. And that scenario, so like for me, like when I, going back to, to winning, you know, tournaments I've won in the past, you know, I look back at um, Chickamauga, you know, tournaments I won, uh, super tournament I won there. You know, I had a lot of knowledge on that body of water, but things are always changing. You have current that's, that they're generating. There's no current generating. And so, but it, it, it always starts. The day always needs to start semi-fresh. You might have an outline of your puzzle maybe on somebody's water, but you can't start filling it in until you start 
making those casts, you know what I'm saying? And then you start getting that, and then that, that bit of information back. And so Chickamauga is a great lake because obviously, you know, I have a lot of history there. And there's a, there's, there's, there's this, this is the thing, okay, hold up. The, the thing about fishing, it, it, it's, it's hard to explain. There's, there's gut feelings, okay? There's things like nature that I feel like, I think God just sort of God given, like, hey, you need to leave, you need to go scenarios. Like in tournament, like professional bass angler, tournament angler. Like, why are are you where you're at? You know, you look at I look at like Dustin Connell. I look at you know my boys like MBJ. I look at myself. I look at you know some of the greats. I look at Kevin Manny. I look at the guys who, have, you know, where they're at in the sport and what they've accomplished. And it's, I feel like a lot of it is a God given talent to where you're able to put that put that puzzle together so much faster and process information at a faster rate. But the thing is, is like the decision making, because there's so, like when you walk into an academy, you go down these these aisles and you're just like all these, you know, all these crankbaits, all these colors. I mean, there's so many variables and there's so many things you can throw and to bring it all into one thing. And then not only on the tackle side, then you have all this tackle here and now your decision making on the water, you have to process all that information and select a lure for a situation to try to figure it out that given day. It's a natural decision making a talent more so than anything. I feel like that decision making, processing the information faster, understanding and getting in that bass's brain a little bit better. And that's that's the difference maker. That's where you have your professional anglers and you it's they just are able and, it, and it, I think it comes down to this as well it's the process of doing that with a time clock too like you now all of a sudden so so okay you're given a daylight to dark and you have this puzzle right now you put a time clock hey you got eight hours to figure it out go you know that amplifies every decision that you make every single day in, in in 15 minutes can mean the difference of you winning the tournament or losing the tournament by the decisions that you make and the adjustments that you make. So that being said, bass can be very confusing and they can be very rewarding. But the thing that I love about them is they're always changing. They're always, they're always adapting. The cool thing about a bass is he, he adapts to pressure. He knows like, so when, for instance, okay, Alabama rig comes out, okay, magical lure. Oh my goodness, big tournament trails banning them. You can't throw an Alabama rig. Well, and, and you go on a lake that, like for me, like on Chickamauga, they were catching 35, 38, 45 pound bags, giant, big, giant, large mouth. Four years down the road, you could barely get a bite on it. Bass, the fish are still there. They just have adapted. There's no magical key. Now there might be for a little bit, there might be some magical lures that come out, but it's you have to adapt with them and change with them and understand their moods and adapt the lure selection to, to how what they're thinking. And, and then you have to adapt to the pressure as well. As lakes get more pressure, you have to change and adapt your lure selection and 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 you know and and keep that's what's fun about it. Like it it never stays the same. Like, yes, can you, but can't, but it also that, like for as a tournament aspect, I say that, but then yet it's it's simple as well. You simplified. You could throw a green pumpkin jig or a five inch worm 365 days a year and catch them on that just, you know, and have a phenomenal time. But the, the thing is, is like, and, and catch that and catch a lot of fish. But like to me, like what makes me tick on it is like putting that puzzle together every day. When I leave the lake and I know that I put this puzzle together and you know and you had an awesome day, there's no better satisfaction. To me, like I it's more important to me to find the fish. Like I don't even care about catching them like that much. Like I just want to know I figured them out. Like, yeah, y'all are in trouble. Like y'all, y'all messed up to that. I got your number. Like that's the game that, to me, that's the game that I love to play. It's not even about the tournament. Like to me, that's the game that I play every single day when I drop my boat in the water. 
I have to figure them out. And they have a completely different mood and they change constantly. They're almost, we're writing this out, they're almost like my wife. I gotta figure them out every day. <laughs> we're not using that. But we might actually, they're almost like my wife. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it is, it's so interesting to me because that's what makes me tick. Now, with all that being said, I can simplify bass fishing and go to a pond and have so much fun with a worm, a weightless worm, a one rod, one reel, reel out there and catch them and just have the most fun I've ever had. But like, I think that the game is for me is like when I go to a public body of water and I, I figure them out and I understand what they're doing, like there's, like everybody has the same opportunity to go out in this body of water to 30,000 acre lake and there's bass everywhere, but being able to figure them out that day and to, you know, to, to be the guy like, hey, I figure them out better than anybody else. There's a lot of satisfaction in that. There's a lot of value to, to be like, when you're like, man, like imagine like in the hunting aspect of you're going out there and you're, you not only have to, cause you have to think about this, like as bass fishing has grown, you have to think of pressure, the fish that are, that are getting pressure and how to adapt to that. You have to figure out where they're going and what they're doing. You have to figure, figure, think about, you have to factor in like your competition and what they're going to fish. And you have to figure in like local fishermen as well, because we're just on public bodies of water and we're being able to fish these tournaments in them. So like, it's a master strategy that it takes to win an event and to put yourself in a position to win. Um, in that to me, like in bass fishing is like what drives me. All right, I know there was a lot there and, and hopefully there's some tidbits that you can sort of take in, into your everyday fishing. But, um, you know, let me know, you know, what, about your fishing. You know, I love to hear how people think and, and to drop a comment below, let me know.